Kia ora team and welcome to episode 24 of Yarns with Beef and Matt, brought to you by Alice Katie and Frog Grips. I'm Beef. I'm Matt. And today we are joined by four-time CrossFit Games athlete and back-to-back Down Under Championship winner, Maddie Sturt. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, good. Yeah, not too bad. Shit, you're getting good at those. You're actually our final episode for the year will be you. Hmm. Oh, really? Oh, good. That's you're, sick. You're seeing us out. Nah. Um, <laughs> how's your morning been? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm excited just to uh, take this week easy, I suppose. Uh, well, not easy. Jay and I are just going to be ripping into um, the Renos this week. So nice. yes. but we're pumped for that. Yeah. yeah. What Renos you got on the, on the board? Uh, just painting. We're oh, up to painting now. All the fun stuff. Less strenuous yeah. at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um how how has your off season been what have you been up to competition wise we know you've done down under but what else have you been up to um yeah basically just kind of training with jay really like um yeah just jumping on board uh we've proven with jay um and yeah even though it's been an off season for me like yeah i've just been training with him like i trained with him while he was leading up to the games, while he was leading up to Rogue, mm. um, yeah, no, no, nothing too exciting on on uh, my side. Just uh, yeah, just keep trying to uh, keep up with him, I suppose. Yeah, oh, how good. Very um, good. And before we get into your illustrious career, which is I just realised been since twenty eleven, uh, well, on the games thing. <laughs> um, what we like to do, throw it back to the young Maddie Sturt before CrossFit. Um, yeah, what was life like for you growing up? Give us a backstory. Oh, well, I started, uh, like I started CrossFit super young. Like, um, I think I was probably about 12 when oh, wow. mum got me into it. Cause she started it and she thought that I would, I'd like it. And I suppose she wanted my sister and I to still grow up, uh, like doing sports, being fit and healthy. Um, mm. so yeah, she was keen to get us, uh, like, yeah, into the gym and cause CrossFit such a cool space even back then um i feel like it's uh there's so much more like teens and stuff doing it now but um yeah back then it was cool so yeah i started crossfit super young (laughs) so i feel like i've just been doing that were you were you doing it originally (laughs) to like uh get fit for a different sport outside of crossfit um i was pretty into athletics um but no i just thought it was it was really cool that you could kind of come in and see how heavy you could lift or try and uh, learn these crazy gymnastic skills. So I just, I just thought it was fun. Mm. Oh, how good. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereabouts did you grow up? Uh, I grew up at the base of the Blue Mountains it, near Penrith. Okay. Um, so mm. yeah. That's yeah. where um, Peter Ellis is. I know where that is now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Pete up. and I used to train at the same gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said it last week, and I was like, no idea. But hey, I know where you are now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just curious. What What's the Blue Mountains like? Like, what's the What's the general consensus of the people and the environment that you grew up in? Quite ambitious, or? Uh, I don't know. I feel like, um, I feel like the mountains is pretty, um, chill. I don't know. Like the mm. mountains is kind of quiet, but uh, I suppose Penrith gets its own rap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, um. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm starting early. I was I was more leading on. So where has your because you're a phenomenal athlete? I'm just wondering where that drive has come from. Has it been cultivated in your environment? Is it your family, your peers? So what is where has that come from for you? Um, I would say my family for sure. Like, um, yeah, just my mom. I feel like she's just our like my sister and I is our biggest support and she's always said like yeah we can we can do anything if we put our mind to it and work hard she's she's always wanted us always wanted to give us the best opportunity to thrive yeah no i like that yeah a big thing we like to do is try and really humanize you guys and really figure out where that Mm. comes from and what makes you tick so that's cool i don't um but going back to the crossfit because that's what i do (laughs) um 2011 was your first open was that like how old were you then 2011 uh I'm trying to think 2014 i was 17 all right we just take three years off that 
So yeah. go, should, should be 14, <laughs> round about. 14. <laughs> Just quick yeah. math yeah. in my head there. <laughs> round about 14. Yeah. All right, sweet. And then you got fit pretty quickly, man. So like you got, I'm just reading off your bio here. Um, by 2013, you were pretty top end. And then by 2014, that was your first regionals. Yeah. Was that Wollongong back then? Yeah, that was yeah. Wollongong. Yeah, I was, I was still in school then. And sure. um, I remember that. It was like I had a backfill spot. And that was when they used to take uh, like 48, I think the number was. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a, a backfill position from people pulling out to go team. Um, and, yeah, so I, I was super stoked because I think I finished, like, in the 20s. So I was like, well, I did so much better than the qualifiers, like, in the open. Yeah. So, yeah, I pumped with that. Yeah, how good. Um, yeah, so you got 29th. And then 2015, what happened there? I got nothing. Um, I think that's when they cut to 30. Oh, okay. So you at regionals. Major. Yeah. So, yeah, even though I know I did better in the open that year, but I was bummed that I missed mm. being at regionals again. And that, that was sort of the where the fire got lit, I suppose. I was like, no, like I want to I want to go back to regionals. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's probably when I sort of uh, switched it up a gear and wanted to take it more seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that because on your open it says you improved, but, yeah, you weren't at regionals. I thought it might have been an injury or something. Okay. No, nah, yeah, I think that's because I think they used to take at one point. Did they take sixty? I don't know. They used to take forty-eight, and then it dropped to thirty. They take. They were taking sixty. At, I know they were taking sixty at like that weird sanctionals time. They were taking uh, fucking yeah. everyone then. Yeah. But um, <laughs> this is going away. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not not sure, not sure. Um, but yeah, um, from from 2015, obviously 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019, you qualified for the games. Um, really impressive, by the way. 2016 was that was that the intention? No, no. <laughs> the intention just was to be back at regionals. So yeah, that was a huge shock that year. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, talk us through that year. So obviously, yeah, that was your first year going to the games. You said previously missing the regionals lit the fire um yeah. so you were pretty how was training that year uh yeah i had some like big changes then because um yeah 2015 i was sort of looking around trying to figure out what i could do what i could change um so i ended up moving and living in newcastle for a little bit through that uh 2016 into 2017 year mm -hmm. um so that yeah that was that was different. I mean, I feel like I needed that uh, to level up. Um, but yeah, that was definitely a challenging time. Like I was so young and, and I moved away from home, away from my friends. I feel like I was, uh, I was isolated and all I was doing was just trading. But um, yeah, that, that's crazy thinking back. Yeah. Where's, um, yeah. where's Newcastle in relation to where uh, you were? Like two, two and a half hours north of Sydney. What took you up there? Just better training environment, or? Um, yeah, my coach at the time. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good affiliation. Be be around like minded people, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, your best year was twenty eighteen at the games. Yeah. Awesome. And then we've gone twenty nineteen, but twenty twenty, obviously, the world fell apart. Um, how was getting through COVID for you? Were you still training? Was there a lack of motivation? Like what was going on mentally? Uh, yeah, that was also another big, big shift, big change. Um, I, I technically did get, I was qualified for the 2020 games because um, mm -hmm. that's when they were doing the qualifying spots from the Open and also like the sanctional events. Mm. Um, but when they changed it all and did the games online then i i got the boot <laughs> all right um so yeah i mean yeah like covid was crazy for everyone but um i got kind of stuck down here in melbourne like that wasn't the plan um jay and i were in bali like march 2020 yeah. and we just landed and we were like the first flight that had to quarantine oh, shit. but at that time, it was only like quarantining at home. So uh, we ended up both coming back to Melbourne and we thought, well, we'll just do two weeks like together in Melbourne. And because Jay had a bit of a home gym set up, so I was like, at least we can still train. 
mm. uh, while we're while we're locked up for two weeks, and then during those two weeks is when Australia went into the the lockdown. Yeah. So yeah, it was like a uh, a forced move. <laughs> yeah, you guys down in Melbourne, you were like the longest, surely like in the world. You've got to be up in there. The you world. guys, I'm were... pretty sure like the most locked down city in the world. Yeah. That's crazy. That is. Yeah. Because um... h- how long were restrictions in place? I'm not. I'm not educated on this one. Forever. Oh, I can't even <laughs> tell you. It was. It are you, just. Are you even t- out? I remember it kept going on and on, and every, it would always be like, "Oh, we should be like coming out," and then it'd be like, "No, nah, extended, extended." Yeah. I I remember watching. On, my brother lives in Melbourne too. I remember watching on the news and like talking with him. Like, it was almost like um, state of a mood, like fucking helicopters flying around and shit. Like, it's it sounded pretty fucking nuts. I don't know. Yeah, how we had curfews and everything. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Shit. Anyway, thinking back, it's like, how did everyone? How, how did everyone do that? I don't know. Oh fuck! Like we whinge over here. I think we were clo- we were closed five in New weeks. Zealand for five weeks. Gyms were a bit longer, but like we had some freedom. We get to open up outside and stuff. But yeah, you guys, holy shit! Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> it was wild, wild times. Um, yeah, I think we were out for five weeks. I was lucky enough to be up at the farm, so it wasn't too boring. Mm. But um, yeah, it's good to hear you got through that. But did you did you get COVID? Have you had COVID? Yeah, yeah, I've had COVID. Mm. But it was it was like years later. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? yeah. Oh, true. So yeah. it was sort of recent. Uh yeah. I'm trying to think back. Maybe maybe like last year. Yeah. Maybe I had it. Yeah, I was like my grandfather only just got it like a month ago for the first time. So it's it's pretty crazy. Have. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering because I've found it myself, but I'm not a CrossFit Games athlete. Um, did you find any like decrease in performance over like not just the recovery period of getting over the COVID, but like the months after or the years or the year after? Have you had any sort of performance like, uh, I feel like I could go a bit harder before that hit me? Uh, not now, no. But I remember um, like the flu part of it wasn't, too bad uh and it didn't last that long maybe like a week but I just remember being tired for like three to four weeks yeah. after it like just yeah still feeling tired during the day but no I'm fi- I feel like I'm fine now yeah <laughs> well yeah <laughs> fuck good. I'd hope so just winning down under <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> um we are definitely gonna move on to that because yeah I want to hear about your experience there but um Going on, I had a question from sort of 21 to now, you've come pretty close to re-qualifying for the games. How has your mindset been over those? Is it like every time you're that close, like, is it like, fuck, like, do I keep going or is it like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm good for next year? Like, what, what is it, where's the mindset? Uh, yeah, all of the above. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely had all those thoughts. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's been very up and down. Like while you can still take um, good things away, and I'm still improving and happy with how things went, it's still very disappointing at the same time. Um, it's like I also went through the mindset of like, well, I used to qualify when we had five spots. Now yeah. we don't. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm sort of really trying to work on and focus on now is, is yeah, just, just rising up, just leveling up, not thinking like that, like thinking and believing in what I'm capable of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for course. sure. Yeah. Do I had you, a very, oh no, go, you go. Um, do you look at, cause I, I suppose you must hear it from the outside. A lot of like, um, I guess you can call them pundits or people that are working in the space of CrossFit who aren't athletes. Um, I know I've been vocal-ish on it, but when you look at the other regions getting a lot of spots, do you compare yourself like, fuck, if I was just there, I would be at the games? Do you, Or do you try to stay away from that? I, yeah, try not to think about it because that's it's not the case. I yeah. can't change that. Um, but yeah, it was interesting last year. I'm pretty sure like someone made up a, a leaderboard with everyone who competed in semis. And yeah. our top, six women were actually inside the top 40 if their leaderboard was correct. Yeah. So that that's just crazy to me that some areas have like 12 spots and we have three if that's if that's the case at the at the semi-final level. 
Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's sort of where I was heading actually. Um, I think you did a um, bit of research. Matt did a bit of research, and I think he looked at your scores in comparison to some of the uh, American semi-finals, and you make the cut, and it's it's crazy. I suppose it's a little disheartening at the same time, but I was sort of leaning towards is not making the games over the last three years. Could you put that down to uh, at all a decrease in personal performance or is it just a matter of the athletes within Oceania are just getting so good and so much better over time that it's just so competitive now. It's almost too competitive. It's like how have you found the talent in Oceania rising over the last few years? Yeah, the sport has come so far, like not just in Oceania, but I think worldwide. Um I think years ago you used to be able to have holes or a bad workout, whereas if you have that now, you're you're out. Mm. Like you can't come back from that, especially with three spots. Um, so, yeah, I think it's definitely the talent and how the sport has grown. Um, and then, yeah, I know like that 2020 and 2021, I uh, was not mentally where I was back in 2018 mm-hmm. I like I can say that and we could maybe even blame that on on COVID really being locked up mm, yeah. like away from everyone I don't, yeah. I, I don't know 100%. so yeah that like that was a goal of mine like going into 2023 at, and even 2022 Torian was just um yeah being happy uh with whatever happened and proud of whatever happened that's massive. That's a it's a really good mindset, and yeah. Um, again, Matt mentioned with our chat with Jamie Green um, that it's funny how back in the day there was so few um, Oceania athletes that had such a big reputation. There was the you know the Jamie Greens, the Kev Manuels. Now there's just so many of your guys' names in the hat. Mm. It's um, yeah, yeah. The uh, the representation argument is um, in our I'm, minds. I, I've been told off <coughs> for how many times I've brought it up. <laughs> So I'm trying to stay away from it. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit, CrossFit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah no they filter. can't use the uh, they can't use the sign up as a oh. as a thing. Like we're never gonna have those numbers. <laughs> they can't anymore because they just increased it from ten percent to twenty five percent. Yeah, but hey, we don't need oh, to get yeah. involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> I let the fire. I let the fuse on that one. Can we talk about how they just raised my affiliation fee? <laughs> Is that <laughs> let's not. are we on the right platform? Yeah. For that? <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it would be very interesting if they went like off a worldwide leaderboard, like your scores at Torian aren't necessarily final at Torian. That would be a very interesting concept, just, just thinking of that. If they're worried about that, just get rid of some from North America. They have 12, get rid of four. You still got more than us. Um, and just open up more spots to the games. If you're going to cut them anyway, like open up more spots to the games if you're worried about America not getting fucking 8 million athletes there. Um, yeah. You know, and then we'll prove to you that we're better and it will just be a top 10 of Oceania <laughs> yeah, we athletes. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to move on. We're going to get cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, we did ask Jay, but I did want to ask you, how, were, how was it? Is it almost like a bittersweet pill um, coming so close, coming fifth at Torian this year? Jay obviously winning the whole thing yet again. But um, how are you standing there watching him stand on top of the podium? You know he's going to the games, but you haven't quite made it. How's how's the mindset for that one? Uh, uh yeah, I like it. I don't struggle with that at all because I'm just so like happy for him. Like I want the best for him, so it doesn't matter uh, what's happening with me. It's like it, I, I would never want to take away what's happening with him. Mm. Um, and yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised at all to see yeah, him yeah. standing on top. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was coming. So yeah, uh, like he, he is just uh, leveling up like every, every competition at the moment. I just, I think it's awesome to see. And, and I can't wait to his season next year. It's, it's going to be wild. Three yeah. time, three peak. <laughs> yeah. Four, four, four peak? He's won it. Wait. Three. He's three. one. He's one at three. Is it? Wait. Uh, fuck. Did no, I just I get that wrong? Second and then oh, first, first. I just got that wrong. 
Something like Did I get one on you? See, the only thing I know point. is CrossFit, and I just fucked that up. It's cool. <laughs> um, I finally got one on him. <laughs> Good on you, bro. <laughs> um, he's the man, too. He, like, replies to our stories and stuff, and because, like, we're just a couple of losers from um, NZ who, like, see him as a celebrity and, like, talks to us. I'm like, yeah, Jay's our mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, shot Jay. Actually, um, it was funny because we, we flicked you a message and – Oh yeah. As, as, yeah, that is massive You're like, Maddie hasn't seen my message yet. Yeah, yeah. Did he did he hit you up? Yeah. Oh crack yeah. up. Thanks, Joe. He's like, I need to check your requests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he might have asked if we were going to down under and we're like, Hey, do you reckon you could ask Maddie to yeah, check right. her DMs? Yeah. It came up organically. All right. He <laughs> messaged us first. Okay. <laughs> but um but yeah, I think that's a pretty good way to segue it on to the Down Under mm. Championship this year. Obviously, back-to-back winner. Mm. Um, phenomenal achievement. I feel like we've been fucking focusing on your shortcomings here, but you are a phenomenal athlete, and you've just won the Down Under Championship again. How was the weekend for you? Yeah, it, it was It was awesome. Uh, it was a little bit crazy because I was actually – I woke up sick on Friday. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh, uh, I was a little bit uh, – I don't, like, I don't know. I was like, well, I'm going to come and do what I came here for or I'm going to die trying. Mm, that's <laughs> that it. ended up being my attitude. So, um, yeah, I, like I'm stoked. And um, I'm also really proud of myself for, yeah, just digging in regardless of what was happening. Was, like there, I, was there a bit of sickness going around? I heard um, a couple, like one athlete I know for sure had to pull out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did talk, chat to medical Friday night and he said there's a few people with the same story. So I think there was something going around. He said it might even be COVID, but yeah. <laughs> oh, well. We'll keep that under wraps. Yeah, yeah. No one is not. <laughs> Melbourne doesn't yeah. have COVID anymore. No. They locked down forever. So <laughs> I got rid of it. But um, w- walk us through the weekend. How Was there any standout moments for you? Um, standout moments. Oh, I loved the first workout. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And I was actually like on the run coming back. Like I could see I was making up a little bit of ground on Pete. And I was like, oh, let's go (laughs) Pete. Because at one point he turned around to like, look who was there. And you gave him the eyebrows. It's just just mads. It's just mads. It's fine. And I was like, no, you better watch out, Pete. (laughs) Bit of bragging rights here. How was that run? Um, Because by the time it got to your guys' heat, the friggin' waves were like right up on your feet. How was that? Yeah. I mean, I, I could see Pete was just literally running through yeah. the water, yeah, but I wasn't, de- I was sort of dodging them uh, as best as I could, but trying to stay on the hardest end too. Yeah. Watching Pete was pretty funny. Like he, I think the first one he tried to, and after that, he was like, ah, fuck this. Like he just charged <laughs> through. <laughs> Flashing through the water. Yeah. Um, how was that D-ball? Because uh, I know that, that leveled a few people. I know Jake Douglas had to pull out because of it. How was that? Yeah. Um, it was everything I expected. Like right. I tried to simulate this workout in training. Um, I did a little bit of a longer run just because the sand was obviously going mm. to take it longer. Um, and yeah, the dead ball in training, I was like, oh, this is like where it's sort of you make or break really. Um, so yeah, I was just trying to just, uh, move consistently through that and not, not take any pauses or anything. You don't have to do it at a crazy pace. I think you just had to keep moving. Mm, that's cool. But yeah. It was hot. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> was it yeah. Australia? Was it, was it muggy though? Cause I heard there was a lot of rain and there was rain clouds everywhere. Like, was it just humid airs or? Yeah. Yeah, it was. And yeah, I just remember like, cause you ran on the sand and then you had to go up the stairs and on the grass for a bit. Mm. And I just remember going up the stairs and hitting the grass and I was like, far out. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's massive. Um, you and Jay have both worked, uh, with Rob Forte. Was his programming predictable at all? Was it, did you see any of it coming? Um, I, like I could guess a couple of movements. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I was like, well, if you were programming comp, you'd want uh, you would naturally put your favorite movements in. And I was like, well, we're gonna see a deadlift workout. <laughs> Rob loves deadlift. Yeah, he loves rope climbs, muscle ups, running. Um, yeah. So like, 
I couldn't predict the workout, um, but yeah, I was like, well, I know there's going to be a few movements in there. Um, mm. And I was like, well, I like those movements too. So it's cool for me, but um, yeah. Fair play. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, yeah, I'm just walking funny because my yeah. knee's are a bit sore. Tore his ACL playing video games. <laughs> really? Yeah. Meniscus. <laughs> Meniscus, sorry. <laughs> wow. Virtual reality is dangerous, Maddie. Don't do it. Oh, I've seen videos of that stuff. People just like hit, like walking into the TV or the wall or like something crazy. Yeah. Oh. Well, hey, what did you yeah, talk her through it, mate? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I play this um, military uh, simulation. Get well, it's 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 full on. Do you know like, Call Call of Duty? Yeah. I think Call of Duty, but you're in the game, so it's it's a bit more intense and um, yeah. We were, we were playing an online esports tournament. I took it a little bit too seriously and um, was getting shot at. So I've gone to go prone, like lie down. And as I've twisted my knee, my foot stayed planted and it's just popped. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's gnarly. But yeah, you wouldn't expect it from No, that's, that wasn't on my list of things that could go wrong um, playing that, but that's fine. Yeah. We, we wind him up like, does he get like a, a medal because he got injured in battle or something? I don't know. <laughs> medal of Allah. Is that how? <laughs> Surely. <laughs> oh, it's funny though. It's anyway, a good, it's that's a good enough, anecdote. It's enough about me. Um, <laughs> back to you. Yeah. Back to the down under. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, I really only watched that first event. Uh, I watched the teams go as well. Um, fuck that D wall carry looked pretty gnarly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's the, like, hmm, glad I don't have to do that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, going through the rest of the weekend, um, on to event two on your bike. What was that one? So you got a pretty quick time there. Oh, is that uh, six minutes? It was 27 burpee box jump overs and then 21, 15, 9, 7, 5 calories on the C2 bike and deadlifts. Oh, okay. Ooh, right. Damn. Yeah. Spicy. Well, and you got sub seven minutes on that. Yeah. Fuck you guys. Are That's fat, crazy, eh? man. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. What was the weight on the deadlift? 70 kilos for women, 100 for men. Mean. You're going to try that later, oh, aren't you? Shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did Jay's workout the other day. He gave us that, um, fuck, what was his one? 21, 21 15, 9, overhead squats at 70, deadlifts at 125. That's right. Oh, that's from that's an old yeah, rogue one. Old rogue one. I that that's that's he, gnarly. Um, <laughs> we had him on just before he went to rogue, and that's one he'd done recently. And what was his time? Like four minutes something. I think it was three something. Three minutes something, and I was fucking nearly twelve. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are crazy fit. Yeah. Um, take it back to down under. Just a question I want to uh, put to you. The, the Oceania athletes are always having to travel for the games. Mm. This one being yeah. home court advantage. Um, a few of the people from the States came over and competed at Down Under. And now it's not to say that it can't be done. Obviously, we've seen Tia do it for so long, but even she's moved to the States. Mm. Um, but Annika Greer, she came second in your guys' division. But... How much of an advantage do you think you have being like home court? Like you don't have to go and climatize. You work out in these conditions every day. How much of an advantage do you think those athletes have? It is a huge advantage, but I think like all of the Aussies that have to travel or like the athletes from Oceania, like we, they've all learned it, like mm. how to do it, I think. Cause yeah, you can, you can definitely still do it, but you, yeah, you need to do it right. You need to set yourself up and give yourself time. Um, and I think that's overlooked by like the Americans potentially, mm, um, how much that taxes your body. Um, yeah. Yeah. Especially like last year when, uh, when like Noah and Chandler came out and they came out like a couple of days before, I was like, Oh, you guys nah. are brave. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, uh, was there any talks out on the floor from the likes of Danny, Annika, um, yeah, Noah, Chandler? Like, is anyone commenting like, man, this is, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that probably was last year, but I think those boys sort of figured it out now. But um, 
yeah, I think definitely like the the people that are that live in the states and then yeah, don't have to really travel or it's just a domestic flight for them to get to the games. Yeah, mm. it's uh, it is a a big difference. Yeah, huge advantage. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. How was it having um? So in your heat it was it was Amy Kringle, um, Taylor Williamson. She was there, eh? Yeah. And how how was it working out with them? Like you know, you wouldn't normally go up against them. So how was that? Yeah, that no, was really cool. I was uh I was keen to uh go up against Taylor and see how um she would go too because I know there's a couple of events that she was gonna probably wreck me in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I, I was I was excited to just um, yeah test myself um, up against athletes I don't normally get to. Yeah, and she's proven as well. So you you say you're unproven now. Yeah. And so she's a proven athlete as well. That's really cool. Yeah. How oh, good. Mm. Um, as a long-standing member of the CrossFit community, uh, how many how many years have you been in the CrossFit game now? Um, as in at the games or. Just in general. Uh, we just, started when you were 12. Yeah, I was 12 or 13 when I yeah. started. Um, so, yeah, what's that? If I was 13, that's 13 years. Okay, 13 years in the game. So, you've seen quite a few iterations of it, I would mm. say. Um, but what would be a standout highlight moment within the CrossFit community for you? It doesn't have to be you. It could be anyone, a personal performance. What What's a highlight moment for you? Something that... You'll always remember. Oh, there's so many. Mm-hmm. Uh, one that doesn't have to really do with me. Um, I remember 2017 when Tia got the win. Yeah. And it, I was standing with Alethea and was it Jess Coughlin that year too? I think it was. Yeah, um, she comes. But to, I just remember yeah. standing with Alethea and then like Tia, like it got announced that Tia had the win. And because and Alethea, like she's such a crier. She always, <laughs> do you guys remember that she just is always yeah. like happy, happy tears? Yeah. And look at her and she's crying. And then I started with my eyes <laughs> started watering too. Like it was just such a, such a cool moment. And because you're like w- watching Tia and she's crying on TV. And I was like, everyone's just crying. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that was a cool moment. Yeah. Oh, it is. A, it is an emotional time. I can imagine, like, um, yeah, coming because that, yeah, that was when they used to take five. So I think Jess was there, but um, like, it definitely would be emotional. You've got the fact that you've just spent the last three days completely beating your body up, and then to finally make this goal that you've been working to for the last, you know, whole season. Mm. So yeah, I imagine. Um, I asked Pete this actually, and I don't ask enough athletes this. What is the switch from that? Like, because you feel like you've made it, but then the next day you're like, "Fuck, I've got to go to the games now." How quick's the switch around from finishing regionals or or Torian and then focus up? You've got the games in a couple of months. Um, yeah, I think like you're obviously you're pumped, like you're jeed. Mm. Um, but it's it's also very important to give yourself some rest too. So I think it's it's normally take it easy for a few days or that week, and then yeah. By the time that following week comes around, like you're ready to to rip in and train hard because, mm. yeah, you're just so pumped and excited that you've got the games to train for. Mm. And on the flip side of that, um, I know we sort of touched on it before, but how long does it take you to flip things around on the other way? Shit, I didn't make it. Um, how long are you giving yourself a rest before you're like, all right, fuck, next year, I'm on? Um. Yeah, I think it depends how you feel. Uh, like, I think this year I gave myself, yeah, probably that week and then, um, like, I started training with Jay. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely know, like, that 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 mental edge, uh, like, it wasn't 100%, like, because I, I didn't have anything on the horizon. Mm. Um, yeah, there's definitely, like, the the downside or the the low that you have to sort of go through and and ride out after yeah your season ending and that I think like that personally came with the CrossFit Games too like you just you're like training for months and months and months and then all of a sudden you're like well now I don't have anything to focus on so yeah, yeah I think it's important to give yourself downtime for for the sort of younger listeners out there um, 
what you've had to do it a few times um what sort of like coping mechanisms or advice would you give for that you know not to beat yourself up to realize that you know you're still an amazing athlete and you can turn things around like is there any advice you'd give out there or like coping mechanisms you've built over the years um i think like the the people around you the team around you um and yeah like you're giving yourself that break and i always think or try to like bring it back to being fun so like if i'm trying to get back into training um i'll like go and do some more stuff outside or i'll um yeah grab my grab my mates and we'll hit some partner workouts and like have a bit of banter and some races in in like teams and partners just keeping things um fun and enjoyable but still like you're you're easing your way back into back into training Mm. without really realizing it because you're you're just having a laugh yeah Yeah, that's awesome I love that. I love that. It's uh, just having fun with it and just having a, a lighthearted nature about it. That's cool. Um, yeah. Remember like why you started doing it, like why you enjoy it so much. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Um, I heard somewhere that you are outside of, hey, there he is. <laughs> then, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, go away. It's for Medi. <laughs> <laughs> to say hi oh, <laughs> oh, thanks, hey, bro. thanks man that was uh jay crouch for those who aren't watching uh the down under championship uh team frog champion. squad frog, frog squad, squad isn't it yeah the frog squad oh, the frog squad would he consider himself the captain or over over was, royce i think he is <laughs> <laughs> yeah good man <laughs> well at least he thinks he is <laughs> nice that's yeah, it. of the of the one event I saw of them. Sorry, we will come back to you. <laughs> but um, just uh, just to give Bailey Martin some shit, he could have carried that D ball a bit more, old Bailey. Jay's <laughs> 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 laughing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so good. Anyway, sorry, I was saying. Um, I heard that outside of sport or CrossFit, you are working as you've become qualified as a nutritionist. Yeah, I'm a nutrition coach for CFK Nutrition. Nice, nice. Um, what what brought that dream on board? Oh, um, a COVID thing, really. Like I, I was in lockdown and I was like bored. What can I do? Um, so I signed up for the Precision Nutrition course. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I I got that done and. And then, yeah, I was lucky enough that Kate was um, trying to bring some coaches on board. So uh, a couple of us did a little internship with her and then, yeah. How good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, a little advice for us um, guys who like to enjoy their kaya but much over the holidays. How <laughs> how would you, or how are you attacking your nutrition over the holidays? Are you letting loose? Are you doing whatever you want? Are you keeping it strict? What's happening? Uh I'm not letting it loose or keeping it strict. I think you need to um, find the balance in there. So I like I always say like uh, value good food, like value like nutrient dense food most of the time, and then you've got that that little little bit of uh, time there for uh, yeah the other foods you enjoy for social events. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, not being too hard on yourself, like. Uh, I say like the 80, 20 rule. So 80% of the time, good food, 20% of the time, enjoy Whatever yourself. You want. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. So, so what I'm hearing is, is it's a glass of water with your pavlova. Is that right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a big glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Have you got uh, any more questions to finish I, up on? I did, but it's completely gone. Fuck. Oh, that happens. Just as Jay came on, I had something fucking outstanding. <laughs> oh, it was, Jay. It was profound, <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh, anyway. Well, shall we? It's gone. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, I'll run it into back to you. Um, the way we do like to close these out is we get a workout off of our amazing guests. So if you have anything in mind, lay it on us. Can I choose a down under workout then? Ooh. As long as it's not event one, you'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> or event two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fire away. Go. Oh, I was going to choose event two. Yeah. Uh, 
To be fair, yeah, that's, go for it. I wouldn't mind doing it. It just wouldn't be three minutes like you. Yeah, let, let's go, event two. All right. Okay. Can, Can you, you spell the, it out for everyone? For the listeners. Yeah. So 27 burpee box jump overs, 24 inches for guys, 20 inches for girls, and then 21, 15, 9, 7, 5 of C2 by calories and deadlifts. And it's 100 kilos for guys and 70 for girls. Nice. Wonderful. And um, I've got it here. Her time for that one was seven, sorry, six minutes and 56 seconds. So we're putting sub 20 on that? Yeah, I'll put a 20 minute cap on that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Should be all right. <laughs> I, I, uh, I promise I will get after that one when I get a new knee. <laughs> yeah, I'll say that's, that's not happening with, with your knee. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll do it. I've, actually, I've actually set myself, and I'll say it on camera now, I set myself a goal because we're not doing this next year. Um, we're not doing the workouts. I'm there's like four I haven't done yet and I'm going to do them on a running clock so your one will be oh I don't know where I'm going to put yours in the scheme of that yeah <laughs> we'll see It'll be a fucking long running clock <laughs> cross crossfitters just love a bit of punishment don't they yeah. I feel bad I've been real slack on them I think to be fair I can't remember the last one I did I did J's I did one after J and then maybe I haven't done one since We'll get there. Yeah. Well, I will. <laughs> um, well, we appreciate your time. Thank you for coming on, having a chat with us. Um, is there anyone you wanted to give a quick shout out? Oh. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> nah. Nah. Don't want to do a Bailey Martin and say, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <no>. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I'll wrap it up with one last question then. Has Jay filled you in on coming to do 24.1 over here? Here we go. Oh, you'd mention it. I, I think we need somewhere to do the workouts anyway. So, I honestly, I have a plan, team. <laughs> I have a fucking plan, all right? It involves sponsorship, frog grips. All right? <laughs> You're paying for the whole lot. I, I tell you what, since Jay was like, yeah, let's do it, his, his mind. Has oh, been going. I've got it worked out. You guys won't have to do anything. Just sit on a plane and land in New Zealand and the rest is taken care of. Okay. All right. Beauty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, um, thank you so much for this, mate. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And, thank you um, very much. That's the final one for 2023, team. So we'll, uh, shit, we'll see you next year sometime. Yeah. We'll end it there. Sign off. Thanks, Maddie. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Thanks. All right. Take it easy. Bye.